God's desire for your life is that you would make His Word your standard of living. The basis of all truth is God's Holy Word. We invite you to join the Beulah Baptist Church in Bennett, North Carolina for Truth For Today with Dr. Neil Jackson. Dr. Jackson's verse-by-verse preaching will encourage you in your journey of life and answer your greatest questions from God's Word. So open your Bible and your heart to hear truth for today. Encourage you in the journey of life. This series will motivate and encourage you to keep fighting the good fight of faith in spite of your circumstances as tough as they may be. For your gift of $50 or more, we will send you this new series entitled Help for the Hurting, and you'll be partnering with us as we seek to take the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Are you a garage sale person? You say, I don't know. That's the way I feel as well. Back when Tracy and I were dating, we got into going to garage sales. Just, I remember there was one morning, I don't know, this never happened probably since, but uh, I was living with my parents, and we hadn't gotten married yet, and Tracy had her own apartment there in Atlanta, and for whatever reason, I was just dead to the world, and I remember Tracy beating on the window, come on, let's go garage selling. Garage selling in and of itself, you're going, and you're going through literally people's trash, stuff that they don't want, stuff that they're saying... Who can I find? What sucker can I find to give me money for my trash? And you're going, oh, we were going down to Carthage not too long ago, and and, and we're driving through Carthage, and somebody's having a garage sale. And Tracy, hey, turn around. Let's go back. They might have some good stuff. They didn't. (laughs) We walked through, looked at all of their trashy stuff, and then we left. Hey, but the whole concept, finding treasure amidst trash. A lot of times in life, we're not so good at distinguishing what treasure is and what trash is. A lot of times in life, we say, oh, this is horrible. This is nasty. This is gross. This is awful. And really... It's treasure. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 was written during one of the most difficult seasons of Paul's life. His circumstances put him in a position to learn lessons that he could have never learned any other way. You look at the last part of verse 11 in 2 Corinthians. He tells us about being whipped, being shipwrecked, being robbed, being mugged, being Betrayed, being jailed, being left for dead. His path to Christ's likeness was paved with hurt, with heartache, with hardships. And we learn from the Apostle Paul today how to deal with difficulty, how to deal with the stuff in our life, how to deal with the trials, the stuff that are awful, that we just do not enjoy, that we just... Oh no, why am I having to deal with this? This morning, four truths about facing your difficulties. Sermons entitled, An Awful Blessing from God. First truth, notice Paul's problem. Look at verse 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Paul was describing this remarkable experience that had happened 14 years earlier where he visited heaven. If you were to take a calendar of Paul's life and back up 14 years, it would put you in Acts chapter 14 where Paul was stoned and left for dead. Now, we're not absolutely positive, but it's possible that it was during that time that Paul was absent from the body and he was present with the Lord. Well, that put Paul in a special class, a special group of people. Hey, I got to see things. I got to experience things that no one else did. 
God took him to the heights that no person had ever scaled. And on the heels of that great, wonderful, awesome, exciting experience, God shows him something else. Look at verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Now in the Bible, there's two words used to describe thorns. The first was used in Hebrews chapter 6, a thorny little shrub, a thorny little plant, like a, like a small cactus or a rose bush, just a little prick. The other word that's only used here describes a, a stake, a big nail that was used to nail big stuff and hold it there. That was the thorn that Paul was experiencing. It wasn't just a little prick in his finger. It was sharp. It was pointed. It was a stake driven right into him. You say, well, preacher, what was this thorn in the flesh that Paul experienced? We don't know. He doesn't tell us. The Holy Spirit doesn't reveal to us. And probably because if we said, oh, well, his problem was this or his problem was this or his problem was this. We say, well, it doesn't apply to me. That was something that's not like what I'm going through. What we know is Paul had a awful experience, a thorn in the flesh that rocked his world. Hey, you will as well. You'll have these situations. No one is immune from problems. No one escapes difficulty. No one escapes these trials that rock our world. When they come, are you going to get bitter? When they come, are you going to get angry? When they come, you're going to question God. God, why are you allowing this to come into my life? Look at verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. When trials come, when difficulty comes, when heartache comes, the answer is to go to God in prayer. God, I'm coming to you. I'm not questioning you. Hey, I'm, God, would it please you to remove this? But notice now, Paul is godly. Paul, if you look at chapter 11, has just suffered great attack and, and persecution and trials and difficulty. You would think, okay, Paul is immune from any more thorns in the flesh. That's not the case. Verse 8, he cries out to the Lord. Lord, take it away. God, I can't handle this thorn. It's rocking my world. And God tells a godly man. God tells a spiritual man. God tells a man that is 100% sold out to him, who had sermons to preach, who had letters to write, who had mission trips to go on. Paul, I'm not going to answer your prayer the way you want me to answer it. You see, friend, being sold out to God does not prevent trials, does not prevent tribulation, does not prevent thorns and difficulty in your life, being sold out to God could quite possibly mean you're going to face more trials. You're going to face more difficulties. You're going to face more thorns. The problem that he experienced. Secondly, I want you to notice the purpose. We don't have to wonder, hey, why is Paul who was so devout, why is Paul who was so sold out, why is Paul who was such a good Christian and good preacher, why is he going through this? Because we're told in verse 7 why he went through it. Notice the first part of the verse. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelation there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. So why did he go through this? So he wouldn't become prideful. Look at the last part of verse. The messenger Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. So he tells us twice. When things are going great. We have the tendency. Well things are going great. Because I'm so great. And God in his sovereignty. In his wisdom. He keeps us from being prideful, keeps us from being exalted above measure, from having the big ego. 
He gives us a thorn in the flesh. Notice what verse 7 says. A messenger of Satan. So God gives us a gift. By the hands of Satan. God uses Satan to accomplish good in your life. But look on in the verse what it says. A messenger of Satan to buffet me means to beat with the fist. It means to harass. It means to bruise. So this wasn't some little prick in the finger. This was Satan, his messenger, come to beat up Paul, to inflict pain on Paul, to cause Paul awful difficulty. You say, preacher, why did God do that to Paul? Because he wanted to use him greatly? Because he wanted to keep him usable? Because James chapter 4 verse 6, God resisteth the proud. He giveth grace to the humble. So one of the ways God keeps us humble is through thorns in the flesh. What you're going through right now. Don't get mad at God. Don't be questioning God. Don't be assaulting God. Don't say, oh, this is awful what's coming to my life. Say, God... You allowed me to experience this because you love me and you only want what's good in my life. Thirdly, notice the provision. Look at verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. So how does Paul respond to suffering? The same way that you and I would. Basalt is a strong word. He begged over and over and over three times. God, please, please, please take it away from me. Rather than pouting about his problem, he prayed about his problem. Every thorn you will ever experience will be a call for you to go to God in prayer. Paul got an answer to his prayer. Now, it wasn't the answer that he wanted. It wasn't the answer that he was seeking. Paul wanted God to subtract something from his life. Take it away. God says, I'm not going to subtract something and take it away. I'm going to add something. I'm going to give you something. Look in verse 9. And he, God, said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Now, here's what's interesting. Paul doesn't get an answer from God until he stops talking and starts listening. Is that the way your prayer life is a lot of times? You're going through trials. You're going through difficulty. You're going through turmoil. And you're saying, God, hurry. God, take me out of this situation. God, I don't like where I am. God, do something. And all you're doing is talking, 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 talking. And you never close your lips to listen. Sometimes we're so busy telling God what he ought to do that we don't listen to God tell us what he wants to do. And when Paul stopped praying, stopped talking and started listening, God started speaking to him. I love this. Look look back at verse 9. And he said unto me. It's in the perfect tense. That means every time Paul prayed, God was answering, God was answering, God was answering. But Paul was talking so loud, he wasn't listening to God. You know, that's Neil Jackson. When stuff comes into my life, like, oh, it hurts. Oh, this is painful. Oh, just just miraculously put me in paradise so I don't have to deal with this stuff. And God says, no. That's not my plan for your life. My plan for your life is you to learn how to deal with that stuff through my grace. Do you see that in verse 9? My grace, God's answer to grief is grace. There's no other venue where God shows His grace more than in pain and suffering and sorrow. There is no grace without suffering and there is no grace apart from suffering. You say, preacher... Grace. What is grace? Yeah, I hear you guys use that word grace all the time. What are you talking about? The grace of God is a topic that you could spend literally years and years and decades discussing and never uncover its true meaning. What is grace? Well, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 talks about saving grace. 
For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So there's saving grace. But that's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about sustaining grace. He's talking about serving grace. You say, okay, preacher, I realize there's different types of grace. But what is grace? Someone has to find grace this way. God's supernatural power to accomplish his will. Someone else has described sustaining grace as divine help to do what's right in difficult times. Someone else says grace is the desire and the power to do what God wants you to do. Someone else put it like this. Grace, God's grace, enables you to face the music even when you don't like the tune. Grace, God's grace, is the supernatural power of God to do what you're supposed to do in the situation you're in right now. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your trial is. The devil wants you to do one thing. That's what he wanted Paul to do. He says, oh, I'm going to hurt Paul. and I'm going to flick paint on Paul. And I'm going to cause Paul just to give up, just to curse God. God gave him grace if he would receive it, if he would accept it, to do what he could never do on his own. We're going to see that in a minute. How Paul responds to this thorn in the flesh is not human. It's not natural. It's supernatural. That is God's grace. Fourthly, I want you to notice the pleasure. Now, this makes no sense apart from the grace of God. Notice verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, rather will I glory in my infirmities. Can you see Paul doing an about face? Doing a 180? Before God spoke to him, Paul says, God, get me out of this situation. God, I don't like this situation. God, please just deliver me. But after he hears from God, he says, God, I'm going to glory in this situation. Do you know what the word glory means? It means to give a shout of triumph. So therefore, he's going through this awful thorn that we don't know what it was. And instead of belly aching, instead of complaining, instead of just wallowing in the mire and saying, oh, my life is so awful, it's just horrible. Paul raises his hand and says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He was not a deadhead Baptist. He was praising Jesus for trials, for thorns, for difficulties. You say, I don't understand that. Look on in verse 9. Most gladly, therefore, rather, glory in my infirmities. Do you see that? That the power of of Christ may rest upon me. The power of Christ may tabernacle around me. The word word rest means a tent spread over us. So therefore, I want God's power to handle this awful thorn. I need your power, God, to handle this awful situation. How do I get it? The power of Christ. The power of Christ in that situation. You say, preacher, I'm in the middle of difficulty. I'm in the situation like I've never been in a situation of my life. And just to be honest, I'm not experiencing his power. The power of Christ is not resting upon me. Can I be honest? If you don't have the power of Christ in your life when you're going through the tribulation, the trial, the thorn that's in your life right now. There's a reason. You're not glorying. Look back at what the verse says. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities. You see the next word? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. So therefore, when I don't see it, when I can't feel it, when I can't... Oh, God, it's just awful. I glory. 
high praise, high exalt His name, and then rushing around me that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's what He's saying. If that's not enough, look at verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in physical weakness, in sickness, in all just the awful situations of my life, the infirmities, in reproaches, in insults, in attacks, in criticisms, in necessities, the hardships of life, the transmission going out on the car, the flat tires, the engine blowing, in those things. Look at what he says. I take pleasure. Paul, that doesn't make sense, man. That's not natural. You're right. It's supernatural. It's where you're going through the trials of life. And you say, God, I need your grace, your power to handle this the way you would. Give me your supernatural grace. And once he received it, I take pleasure in affirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions. Can you imagine that? He's getting stoned. He's getting beaten. He says, "Woohoo! this is great. This is awesome because Christ is giving me power to handle that. Persecutions, distresses, the heartaches of life, the heartbreaks of life, the awful losses of life. Do you see what he says? I take pleasure in them. Say, preacher, I don't get it. You can get up there and you can try to throw out your fancy talk. I don't understand how somebody, when they're in the roughest situations of their life, the heartaches of life, how could they ever possibly take pleasure in those situations? Look back at verse 10. I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses. See the next three words. For Christ's sake. Let me give all of you a news flash. This life that you're living is not about you. This life that you're living is all about Christ. So therefore, sure, anybody can serve God when it's just sunshine and roses, when you've got plenty of money in the bank, when the car's running great and the kids are all well and everything is just happy. Who couldn't serve God then? But when you're being rocked to the curl, when, when, when your life is falling apart and you take pleasure in distresses, in sufferings, in persecutions, in afflictions, you say, why would he do that? For Christ's sake, so that people see you going through those awful circumstances and they say, I don't understand how you're doing it. And you say, I'm not doing it. There's no way I can make it through this situation. I'm making it for Christ's sake so that he could be glorified, so that he could be lifted up, so that he could be magnified. Notice the last part of what he says. For when I am weak, when I have no strength, when I am at the rock's bottom, when I've hit bottom and there's nowhere else to go, then am I strong. Friend, the situation you're going through right now is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. The situation you're going through right now is an opportunity for you to depend upon the grace, the supernatural power of an almighty God. The situation that you're going through right now that you don't like, that you're saying, why this? Is an opportunity for you to show Christ and example Christ to your world. And that is the best opportunity you will ever have to influence people for Christ is in trials, in affliction, and difficulty. Thank you for joining us this week for Truth For Today. Our prayer is that God's Word has ministered to your deepest need and answered many of your questions about life. Truth For Today is only able to stay on the air through the financial support of God's people. 
Would you consider partnering with us to take the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world? You may mail your gifts to Truth For Today, P.O. Box 104, Bennett, North Carolina, 27208. Please include the call letters of this station when you write. If you'd like to receive a copy of today's message, please request this sermon with your donation of any amount. If you'd like to donate by credit card, you may call 336-581-3170. Be assured that God's Word has the answer for your every need. And join us next week for Truth For Today. Thank you.